All right, so we are in this cost sheet, and uh, I see a couple of people already on here. I believe we are now here. So this is our sample cost sheet, and uh, as you can see, with this cost sheet, um, we what is this cost sheet all about? What is this cost sheet all about? We actually have received an order from a school. In this case, an example is Mukisa Secondary School, and uh, we are yet to sign a contract for making a uh, hundred uh, shots and uh, of large size. So a cost sheet pretty much looks like this. You'll be able to download it from your classroom page. So a co what are the features of this cost sheet? What are the parameters that go into here? The block that you see right here is the information block. The inputs here include the style number. Now, for every project that you're creating, it needs to have a style number. And you can index this, for instance, using both letters and numbers. In this case, we are using the first three letters, which, which mean uniform, U, N, I, and 001, meaning this is the first style number. Alternatively, you can... Uh, Alternatively, you can actually index this basing on the client. If, for instance, it's my if my client is Mokisa Secondary School, I can call it MSS, you know, uh, so that I can quickly get back to that style number for that client. The theme, this theme is empty, but themes can range from uh, uh, themes can range from uh, uh, different uh, scenarios, you know. For instance, your style may be inspired by a particular theme, and you can really uh, have to uh, input it in here. Then the year, this is when the project is actually initiated. In this case, it's 2021. And the size right there is uh, a large size. Uh, and if you're making different sizes, for instance, extra large, small size, you can actually create a cost sheet for each size. The description here is school uniform. Of course, if you're making something else like casual wear or you are making maybe graduation gowns, you would still um, indicate exactly the type of garment you're making. And the date, when are you actually costing this? And the brand, is it your company brand or is it the school's brand? Is it to own, is it the brand to be owned by the client or is, uh, is the brand actually to be owned by the venture? Um, the target market and of course uh, the target market here are students and the product category uh, school uniforms and then you can always put your logo like i can say i put a motive logo in the middle here you can always put your company logo remember you're going to be having like a file where you sort of like print this off and put it into your file or your folder then also it's important to always put like um the image of the product you're actually making. In this case, uh, the, uh, I had to put the image of the shirt which I'm making. If it's gonna be like a full school uniform which has a, both a shirt and a short, then you would put both pictures uh, in here. Now I'm using Excel, but you can always draw this uh, maybe on a piece of paper or a table on a piece, you can draw like a simple table on a piece of paper and attach some of these things. Still would pretty much still be the same thing. Going on, um, what parameters actually go into the cost sheet? So I'm moving on to the next block. And in this next block, you can see we have the item, the description, the supplier. So item means uh, what is the uh, item in question here? You know, uh, more like the material or the aspect that you're talking about that is going to go onto our product, into our gamut. The description. Um, uh, you know, uh, you, the description here is basically uh, a, a brief on each of these on each of these uh, items. Then the supplier, uh, who is going to supply you this um, uh, raw material or item? Is it imported? Is it coming from China? There are scenarios where you'll find that some raw materials and you cannot be sourced locally, and you actually have to contact uh, your um, you actually have to contact um, a couple of uh, suppliers from probably uh, outside the country, you know. Uh, from my experience, we've had to procure some things from outside Uganda 
uh, these could be actually swatches they could uh, be small small elements or they could be actually uh, a bigger part of your project you know and you need to understand how those cost factors are uh, add into your entire budget uh, this could be in form of import duties you know as i'll talk about that in a short while the price unit of uh, the price per unit measure this me here means measure uh the price per unit measure means uh what is the price per measure what is measure in this case what is unit measure unit measure is uh, the units you're actually uh using to quantify your items if for instance i'm quantifying pv which means polyester viscous i'm going to get each probably each um uh I'm going to quantify this maybe in terms of meters. I can quantify in terms of rolls. For instance, if I am making like, uh, if I am making like uh, ten shots, you know, I may actually base on meters. If I'm making uh, probably one thousand shots, it's important for me to to base my unit of measure in terms of rolls. But in this case, we'll base on meters, which is a basic unit. And each meter, so when you come to price per unit measure, each meter goes probably the supplier is selling it at. 8500 shillings you know quantity per unit for each shot that you're making or for each item that you're actually uh going to procure how much do you need for making one garment so in this case to make one shot we may need 1.5 meters and our unit to measure are meters and the symbol here is letter m then import duties is this polyester viscous going to be imported yes or no if it's a no as you see we indicated here then of course you're not paying any import duties and this becomes 0, 0.0 or simply zero so what is the total price then i'll talk about that in a bit so the next parameter that we'll have here is the total price that we will need to actually make one garment then this section here in the green is a section i'll talk about last after talking about this section in orange because this section here in the green is actually the production budget for making all the 100 pieces of uh uh the 100 pieces of garments that you you are to be contracted so to start off the raw materials our raw material the first raw material we need here uh, as an example for instance we need pv pv is polyester viscous uh, but you may potentially use other materials. I get a little background noise. Uh, you'll bear with me. Uh, so PV is polyester viscous, but you may use a different material. For instance, polyester cotton, which is abbreviated as PC. You may use, for instance, 100% uh, uh, cotton. You may any sort of material. So the main material here is polyester viscous, which is 65% 35. 65 35. What does 65 35 mean? 65-35 means that this is 65% polyester and 35% viscous. If it was polyester cotton, in Ichiembe they call it gentleman material, polyester cotton. That would be 65% uh, polyester and 35% cotton. If it was cotton, just cotton, then it would be 65, it would be just 100%. Just I'll just simply put 100 here then what color is it it's probably white as you can see in this illustration here it is white uh it is white <clears throat> then so we are going to be buying polyester viscous white from who so it's always important that in your workshop you try as much as you can to bookmark suppliers how much is each supplier selling an item so you have a supplier's uh, book where you write down the suppliers and the items they sell and the price at which they sell at so that you can always use that as a reference guide in your cost sheet is it imported no we're not importing this because it comes from gmb textiles at what price Eight thousand five hundred shillings uh how much material do we need 1.5 meters as you can see the unit of measure here is meters um the unit of uh, measure is meters 
and is it important? No, so it's 0, 0.0 in tax. So the total price here means you're going to actually multiply. So I've already done this Excel sheet, but you're actually going to, you can see how it has highlighted them. You're going to actually multiply the price per unit measure by the quantity per unit, which will give you uh, 12,750 shillings. That is how much money you need to spend on making one shot in terms of the PV material. But there are other materials as well, like fusible. Fusible means stiff. And uh, this stiff, uh, someone needs to mute their call. Uh, someone needs to mute their call. Thank you. Um, so fusible is, you call it stiff in a common layman language. Stiff may be used in the colors. Like in this case, you may use color stiff. And you're probably buying it from another supplier. In this case, I used an example as Musana dealers. And it's not imported. And the price per unit measure, for instance, people could probably be buying each meter at 2,000 shillings. And uh, the quantity per unit, how much do you need? I probably need 0 0.25, which means a quarter of a meter. So when, is it imported? No. When you multiply steel, we're going to multiply 2,000 sh shillings times 0 0.25, which will actually give me 500 shillings. That's how much money I'm spending on one shot to make a collar. Buttons. What type of buttons do you need? Plastic buttons. And these are probably white buttons from the same dealer or from another dealer. Imported or not imported, etc. We go on, and uh, the unit measure here, it's not going to be meters in this case. The unit measure is going to be per piece. Things that are not quantifiable in terms of meters, yards, inches, uh, we can call them per piece. Like this one, you need like how many buttons? Six buttons. Eh? As you can see, the quantity point is six buttons per piece. Each button going for, each piece of button going for 100 shillings right there. When you multiply, you will get 600 shillings and 600 shillings and that's how much money you're spending on, on on all the buttons on one shot likewise for threads uh, you need white threads from the same dealer and they're not imported now we are actually all you need to measure for threads here is cons but it could be something else it may be a spool it may be something you know but in this case it is cons and how many cons do we need now there is a formula we use here. 100 divided by 3,000, what does this mean? It means that each con has actually 3,000 yards. But I'm not going to use 3,000 yards on one shot. I may probably use like 100 yards. So to get how many yards I use on one shot, I'll get one. To get how many cons I use on one shot, I'll get 100 yards which I spend on a shot, divide by the 3,000 yards, which are the whole con, then I'll potentially get the number of cons I need for each shot. So these are the cons I need for each shot. So when I multiply this times this, I'm going to get 117 shillings. And that's how much money I'm actually spending on. Uh, that's how much money I'm actually spending uh, on threads. Branding. Branding. What is branding? Like in this case, our school uniform needs to have like a logo. And branding may be done internally if your venture, if your workshop has a branding section. If it doesn't have, you may end up doing it externally. If you have to do it externally, you'll incur some charges like. Uh, some expenses like designing the logo and the actual embroidery. If it's printing, it may be designing still the logo and then printing. And who is doing the printing is probably the example I use JJ Embroidery. And uh, is it an imported service? No. And how much are you spending? Uh, per, how much are you spending per design? Now, in this case, they may charge you, that, for instance, 30,000 shillings to design a logo. But now this logo is going to go on 100 shots. So when you divide, you get how much money you spend on each shot in terms of designing. And in this case, we are spending 300 shillings. So, and how many shots are we actually branding? 
for this part, for this, this orange section, we are basing on one shot. And this is just one shot. So when you multiply, you get 300 shillings. And that is how much money you actually spend on, uh, uh, on designing. Then the actual embroidery, um, still from the same pr probably supplier. And for each shot, they could probably charge you 3,500 shillings to, uh, to, to, to embroider it, you know? And it is just one shot per piece still, because it's one shot per piece. And it's, uh, it's not, there are no import charges. When you multiply, you get 3,500 shillings. You are actually spending on that embroidery. So what's the total here? I forgot to talk about the total, the total on the raw materials. The raw material cost, you're simply going to add all the total costs under raw material. This plus this, this plus this, plus this, plus this. So if you're using an Excel sheet, you'll simply say equals the sum of all these figures here. And you will be able to get, um, you will be able to get uh, the cost on the raw materials. Similarly, on branding, you'll simply be adding this plus this, and you'll be getting plus that you'll be able to get the total branding cost shoot so that is how much you're actually spending on the branding cost so how much you're actually spending on the packaging you're going to probably packaging this shot first of all in a polythene which is probably an a3 size maybe you're getting it from chikubo traders you're not importing it how much money are you actually spending on this polythene for instance, when you buy one package, like this for last time when you bought one package, when you buy one pack of A3 Caveras or polythene, one pack has 100 polythenes, and each pack costs 16,000 shillings. So how much does each single Cavera cost? Each single Cavera costs 16,000 divided by 100. Therefore, you're actually spending 160 shillings on each polythene to pack one shot. And when you multiply, you get 160 shillings, and that's how much money you're actually spending on. Uh, that's actually how much money you're spending on the packaging. Then the box, uh, the box, you probably are going to pack all these 100 or maybe probably 20 shirts in a box. So how much does each shirt cost on a box? Maybe you're getting this, this, the dimensions of a box is 17 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches from Rajiv boxes, and you're not importing this, uh, this, pro, this uh, item. And uh, then definitely each box may probably cost 5,000 shillings. And in each box, you're packing 20 shirts. When you divide, you actually get 250 shillings to spend on each garment. And when you multiply, you get 250 shillings. What is the total cost on packaging? The total cost is 410 shillings. Moving on to uh, overhead overhead and labor and overhead costs right here. Direct labor. Direct labor, this is uh, how much you're paying seamstresses or how much. You may probably get a deal and you don't even have a workshop. And you're probably going to contract someone in GMB or probably going to contract Motive to make these items for you. So you need to know how much you're spending on this labor. You know, how much are you, if you're, you're paying Motive to pay for you, how much are you paying them per piece? If you have your own workshop, how much are you paying each tailor? So in this case, for instance, um, we are paying each tailor 5,000 shillings to complete a shot. We are paying a tailor 5,000 shillings to complete each shot. And uh, for each shot, which is one piece, when you multiply, you get 5,000 shillings. What is the indirect labor? The indirect labor could be, for instance, fulfillment costs. You need to transport these products to the client. Like we talked about all these indirect labor costs in the previous session. Um, the indirect cost, you, for instance, probably spending 500 shillings on each shot in terms of indirect costs. Uh, indirect labor. This could be a Boda Boda guy who is going to deliver the items. Sometimes the client may say, I'll deliver them by, I'll pick them myself. Then, of course, this reduces your indirect labor. Uh, you know, all these costs, you know. When you multiply, you get 500 shillings. The overhead costs. Now, what are overhead costs? In this case, 
overhead costs uh, we, we can we can calculate overhead costs in terms of uh, uh, in two in two scenarios you could for instance uh, say it is 10 percent as you can say multiply by 0 0.1 the sum of all the above costs of all the above total costs so i get the sum as you can see the sum of all the above costs i multiply by 10 percent then i get the overhead costs or i could calculate these overhead costs which means that i know how much am i spending in administrative cost each month how much am i spending in the probably uh, servicing my loan the interest rate how much am i spending you get all these overhead costs add them together then you ask yourself how much deals am i making in a month you know the probably say I'm, I'm spending about 10 deals in a month you get those 10 deals and you divide them by the total costs and you will be able to get your overhead costs but a better way to actually do this is to this is to uh based on an assumption of uh, 10 percent the sum of the entire costs above yeah all right uh as we are about to wind up this uh part now what is your total cost of production now your total cost of production is going to be the sum of the total that you got from the labor costs <clears throat> from the raw material costs the total that you plus the total you got from the branding cost plus the total you got from the um, packaging cost plus the total you got from the labor and overhead cost and this will give you your total production cost so what is going to be your markup your markup is going to be the profit divided by the total cost of production then times a hundred percent then you're going to be i'll post these uh, formulas in the classroom i know that most of the cost sheet may be a little bit confusing but you can still follow and say that this is going to be the uh, profit divide by the total cost of production multiplied by a hundred percent then your markup is probably going to be some value then what is your selling price excluding vat or your selling price before actually putting the tax the government tax what we call the value added added tax this is going to be the uh, the selling price is go excluding the tax the selling price excluding the tax is going to actually be the um uh, is going to be the selling price which has both the vat the selling price which has the vat the selling price which has the vat plus the vat itself so the way we do this is a little bit of a reverse but it's always good to use this template and you just populate the values as i showed you above then this will be done automatically so that um you will be able to uh, so um yeah and the selling price including the vat so in this case how much do i want to sell this uh shirt probably i want to sell it let me say thirty thousand shillings when i put thirty thousand shillings and click enter it will show me that okay i am actually making a loss if i sell at thirty thousand shillings i'm making a loss of uh, uh negative five percent so it's actually good to use this template because these values are populated for you already and all you have to do is to populate how much you want to sell that shot if for instance you want to sell it maybe fifty thousand shillings then it will give you how much profit you actually make you're making a 57.4 percent and you'll be making a profit of fourteen thousand shillings and you'll be paying nine thousand shillings in tax so call you know so if you have any questions around this part i know it's not fully extra pounded you can still put your questions in the comment section in the classroom section um now the production budget is the green zone the production budget what is my order quantity in this case the order quantity is 100 shirts but it can be any you may be probably having an order quantity of 200 shirts of 300 shirts you know and uh you may be having a, an order quantity of 100 shirts 200 shirts blah 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 as you can see here now 
this order quantity it means that you're going to how much how much pv do i need remember we calculated how much pv we need per shot but how much pv do we need per 100 shots so this is going to be the 1.5 meters that we need for one shot times the order quantity which is 100 so for each of these items here we're simply going to get the quantities we need and multiply them by the order quantity in this case which is 100 so for one shot i need 1.5 meters for 100 shots i'll need 150 meters so i'll multiply that so how much money will i spend to buy 150 meters i will simply get the quantity i need rather the total price for buying the PV for one shot times the order quantity, which is 100 again. Therefore, I'll be spending 1,275,000 shillings to buy 150 shots. Uh, to repeat this, what are you actually doing for this section here? Um, you are actually simply getting the 1.5 meters and multiplying them by 100 shots, which you want to make then you'll probably know how much quantity of fabric you need and in this case we need 150 meters 150 meters um how much quantity do i need to buy how much quantities do i need for fusible for stiff i'll simply get the 0 0.25 meters and i multiply by 100 therefore i'll need 25 meters i'll therefore need 25 meters of stiff and at at what cost i'll get the 500 shillings and i multiply by 100 shots therefore i'll need 50000 shillings to buy 25 meters of stiff and similarly i do the same for buttons i do the same for threads and then i'll add the totals here which will give me how much money what's the what budget i actually need for raw materials in this case is one million three hundred and ninety six thousand six hundred and sixty seven shillings i do the same for branding you know i do the same for branding in this case i'll need um i'll basically you see this is how 100 shirts you know you can see this is 100 shirts 100 shirts will cost me 30,000 shillings in designing. 100 shirts will cost me 350,000 shillings in embroidery. When I add the total, I'm spending 380,000 shillings on branding. Packaging, uh, 100 shirts will cost me 116,000 shillings in buying the polythene. 100 shirts will cost me 25,000 shillings in buying the boxes and uh uh so when i add the total i'm getting forty-one thousand shillings and this is how much money i'm actually spending on packaging how much money am i spending on labor cost i do the same for 100 shirts i'll be spending five hundred thousand in labor cost i'll be spending fifty thousand shillings in indirect costs and i'll be spending two hundred and thirty six thousand shillings in overhead costs it's always good to keep your overhead costs minimal because if you have a huge percentage on your overhead costs if your overhead costs go above 15 percent you are actually spending a lot of money on unnecessary things so you must keep your overhead costs at least below 15 percent when you add the total you will be getting 786,000 shillings on labor costs now you want to understand where am i spending more money you're actually spending more money buying raw materials now if if you do your cost sheet and you realize you're spending more money on labor and overhead costs just know you're probably not uh, uh, your project is not effectively being executed you're spending so much money in actually making the item as opposed to actually buying the the, uh, the materials that are needed to make the product you know so it's always good to keep your labor costs a bit low not to actually squeeze not to mean that you have to squeeze your workers but at least these are some of the costs you try to maintain low because in most cases you'll always find that raw material costs are a bit high and uh, you'll always evaluate your cost sheet and you probably want to reduce the cost 
maybe on something you are targeting a, a a certain selling price, and you end up ad having to adjust uh, different parameters and twitching them here and there. Now, when you add your costs, your total cost, how much are you spending on making this shot? And this is the most important figure. This figure here in the green zone. How much budget should you have to make a hundred shots for this company? You need to secure two. 0.6 million shillings to actually make 100 shots. So this is where you need to ask yourself, where am I getting this money? Should I get a quick bank loan or should I um, tell the client if I'm signing this contract with them to probably uh, lay down 50% of this money so that I can reduce how much I'm taking out of my pocket? You know, this figure here is so, so important. And the markup is always the same. Uh, the markup is always the same. Uh, I simply have to make it as a percentage. The markup is always the same. You are, are still uh, spending, you, in this case, uh, the markup is about 57%. Markup means how much profit I'm making, you know. For every 100 shillings you're spending, you're going to be making um, 57 shillings, which is actually very good because you're returning half of the money you're you're actually earning halfway of your investment. You know, it's a very good, you know, uh, profit in my view, you know. So what does this actually translate to in terms of shillings? This is about 1.4, close to about 1.5 million shillings in profit. And uh, uh, so what is the total revenue without tax? The total revenue without tax means you're adding your total cost of production plus the total profit which comes down to about uh, which comes down to about <coughs> uh, excuse me which comes down to about four million one hundred thousand shillings as your selling price excluding the VAT. What is VAT? VAT is value added tax, which is eighteen percent. You know, and when you subject your if you add the VAT, which is 18%, this is 900,000 shillings, then your total revenue will be 500, 5 millions. So once 5 million lands on your account, you should be able to distribute this money accordingly. You should be able to recover your total cost of production, which is 2.6 millions. You should have be able to keep your profit 1.4, uh, one point, about 1.5 million, and you should be able to pay the government tax which is about 900,000. So this is how we actually calculate um, how we go about this cost sheet. I know it's uh, a little bit of a rush and it takes some practice to our uh, to do. So that's why there is an assignment for you. Uh, if you go back here on uh, your classroom page, um, if you go back here to your classroom page, let me share that tab. If you go back to your classroom page, which I'm share, sharing right now, you will be able to get to your assignment. And uh, if I'm to get to that assignment in a sec, your assignment, um, your assignment is right here and it's underneath uh, the study material. Uh, when you go in there, you will see this is always good for you to practice and uh this has been assigned to all of you <laughs> about 36 students um well the headmistress of uh kayunga kayunga you know <laughs> supposed to be kayunga the headmistress of kayunga primary school intends to sign a contract with your company to produce 300 dresses for the upper primary section consider the following each dress of large size takes 1.5 meters of PV fabric, 0 0.1 meters of soft stiff, and a long dress zipper, and needs an embroidered badge. So these are all the uh, mater materials you will need to, uh, these are all the materials you will need to uh, execute this project. Therefore, this will be your assignment. So we will do this assignment, and uh, you'll probably get an Excel sheet on your computer, or you just draw maybe simple things, uh, or maybe draw a, t a table, 
uh, on your, uh, you get a piece of paper and draw a table and try to execute uh, this cost sheet. Then you'll share it with me. I'll be putting where to share it in. I will be putting where to share it, where to send it. Uh, Cause uh, uh, in this particular sheet, uh, there is no, uh, in this particular sheet, there is no, um, in this particular sheet, on this particular sheet, there is no, uh, there is no attachment area. Tell me if you find your attachment area. But uh, uh, Nakayemba, kindly mute your call. Um, sorry about that. I was saying uh, you will be able to attach your assignments, or you can actually send them directly to my email, and these will earn you points. And uh, these points will be, these points that you will have earned will be able to, um, these points that you will have earned will be able to, uh, you know, help us to evaluate how you've learned these concepts. Now, um, I will open the room for us to discuss and to ask uh, as many questions as we can. Uh, now you can unmute if uh, one person at a time who needs to, uh, we're not using Zoom, so that's why I'll encourage one person at a time to actually um, ask a question. Um, I see, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the floor is open. You can unmute and ask as many questions as you can in the next uh, 15, let's say 10 to 15 minutes and we'll close this class. Yes, I've opened the floor for you to ask questions to me.